Hello and welcome by the Arcade Saga. My name is Jokion Wiersma and today finally I'm going to make a video that I've been promising you guys <laughs> that I, want, uh, I wanted to make. Well, firstly, I wanted to wait uh, before uh, they all started blooming and I think they do. And obviously I'm talking about my uh, wall of fails. So yeah, it's something that uh, in here in my greenhouse, which I really, really love. And especially this time of year, of course, because as you can see, all those beautiful blooms, those beautiful colors, they really, really make me smile. And it's just, it's just perfect. It's wonderful. I enjoy it incredibly much <laughs> i'm uh, yeah i'm basically uh, a few times per day here and just uh, looking at them so yeah i know some people do not like the vandaliopsis but i uh, love them and and yeah they're so much fun uh, fun to grow and like i said a lot of different colors so i'm going to take a camera uh, from the tripod in a, in a minute and we're going to look uh, at them uh, one by one and I'm not trying to overdo it, but I really uh, will give them uh, some time and I'm going to talk about it, uh, about them a little bit. Some have a, a bit of a story behind them. And I'm also going to do, um, if I have, I'm going to mention the names for the Pacific uh, family ups that I'm showing. But most of them are no IDs, just supermarket purchase. But who knows, because I recently did get a question again, especially about the red fails or the purple ones. If they have a name, uh, I will show it to you guys. So uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's start this video and um, have a closer look at them. So here we are, you guys. I uh, just have my, uh, grab my camera and I think I'm going to work from left to right and then we should uh, see them all one by one. We're going to have some chalicing uh, areas over here because of all those spikes, but I did water them uh, this morning. So I have a little bit of practice, but we, uh, we shall see how it goes because yeah, this is, this is area is not uh, always that easy to reach. Anyhow, here we go. Oh, and before I forget, uh, according to my notes, I have 65 of them. So if you want to count, be my guest. I'm not counting, uh, but if my notes are correct, 65 fails. Well, here we go. <laughs> this is a summer bloomer. This is a uh, Bellina type. I hope you can see the tag. It's not in bloom yet. Uh, it needs a little bit more the warmer temperatures and a more light, which today we have. It's fairly warm in, inside of the greenhouse. So maybe the upcoming weeks it will uh, start to flower again. It is working on this leaf. It's, that's why it's very shiny. It's, it's a very nice new leaf. So I, uh, I think a, a new uh, flower spike, uh, I'm sorry, a bud will uh, form. It looks like it, uh, it's already there, but who knows, in the near future. Then we have this beauty with three spikes. And I have a name for this, but I need to check. It's Gotras something. Uh, yeah, family ops is Zogo Gotras. And that is she. She's a, it's a very um, nice, delicate, uh, delicate orchid, I think. It's a uh, mini fell, as you can see. With beautiful, uh, nice blooms. There is a bit of a fragrance sometimes, but not much, not much to write home about, but there is slightly fragrance on the more sunny days. But yeah, beautiful, uh, beautiful little flowers, the yellows and the pinks. I have this one for four or five years, I think. And you can see it's, it has quite a size to it. We have quite a root system and decided to make two cakeys. This is a basil cakey. And here we have another one last year so those start to grow and i always imagine that those start to shoot out flower spikes as well so that would be nice that would be very nice <laughs> but yeah, so go gutters that is this one then down here um it hasn't those very light colored leaves but still i think this is more a summer bloomer and it also worked through the winter on this leaf, which is quite a size bigger than this one. That's, so that's what, something that I always try to look at. It's an indication that your orchid is happy. <laughs> uh, and this was a, a freebie uh, two, three years ago, something like that. And this is the uh, crush it is, if you uh, want to know more about it. But as you can see, not in bloom yet. It's, uh, it will be soon, I think. Yeah, I think it's working on the spike again. Then over here, let's go to this uh, 
lovely married couple <laughs> we have here. I have, they share a basket, so that's why I uh, always think of them as a <laughs> little bit of a couple. Uh, a couple, I'm sorry. Well, you probably recognize this one. It's a fairly famous one, I think. It's the uh, Minimark, let me quickly show you the tag, Minimark uh, Maria Theresa. So this is this one. I must admit, this is my third uh, Minimark over the years, and I, they kept dying on me. But this one seems to do fairly well, and it has quite a long spike, as you can see, for a Minimark. It decided to make another spike here, a very tiny one, and it started one here, but it did stop growing that one. This one didn't grow as big, but this one did. So this one uh, took uh, probably all the energy. It has a branch here as well. So, uh, but it's beautiful, the Mini Mark. I really understand why people want this one. Look at this, it's beautiful. Very nice, bright orange lip with those speckles on the blooms. And I thought it very suiting with that orange. You can see because it's almost the same color as this one. And this one is absolutely stunning. If you ask me, this is the Fennel Yapon Yap, 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 um, Cubit. So I tried to pronounce the names right, but uh, bear with me. I'm putting the tag back. And here she is. Look at that. Such bright colors. And like I said, if you look at it, almost the same bright color that the, the uh, Mini Mark has in the lip. So yeah, I think they uh, go very well together. So therefore they uh, became a couple. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. And don't mind that old leaf that happens, all the leaves fall off, but it's not from these two guys. These do uh, fairly well. This leaf is also bigger than this one. And yeah, this one is also a bit bigger. Well, actually this is a new one. I think it's still growing. Anyhow, they uh, seem to do fine. Then we have something a bit different over here. Also very beautiful, nonetheless. Absolutely beautiful. First time bloomer for me. It's this one over here. And this is the name it came with. The variety Nobilis. But that one is more yellow. It does have the same leaves. It doesn't have that strong pattern that the... Uh, I'm sorry, Sutriatria has. <laughs> Here we go with the names. I have the original one as well. You can see the, it in a minute, what I'm talking about. So, but this one doesn't have that mottled leaf as much going on. It's just a little bit. But the blooms should be a little bit more yellow. But I also can see that it looks like they start to get a bit yellow more during... Um, so, yeah, some, some uh, about a week, I think, maybe two weeks. They start to yellow up a little bit more. So probably I have the right one, but it opens up fairly almost white. And then it starts to yellow. But I, I, I maybe that's what this needs to do. But this is the first time I uh, bloom it, so I'm not completely sure. And let me go through the actual stu Stuartia. Stuartia. I'm sorry, guys, but you can see the leaves, the difference. And that shows more on the white ones as this one. This is the second time I do rebloom this one. But yeah, that's the, the yellow one next to it. <laughs> this is very beautiful. Um, I did get this one from a colleague uh, five years ago, something like that. So she buys friendly offices only for the blooms. When they're done blooming, they, uh, she throws them away. And so that is what I heard. And then I said, well, you may want to give it to me so I can rebloom it. This said, uh, it's, that's fine, you can have it. And it was more pink when I did get it, but I think because of the light, it's, it's more the original color. And uh, it's a mother plant here with a keiki that has quite a lot of roots. And that keiki is on a old flower spike. I tried to show it to you guys. I hope you can see there an old branch and there is the keiki hanging on, uh, coming from. Um, maybe this, no. Yeah, there it is. This is a bit easier. So it has quite a lot of roots as the mother plants 
done. So if this, these uh, girls are done blooming, I'm going to uh, repot them. Basically pot them up. And I don't want to cut it off. I try to keep it as one plant because I just like it. <laughs> but if it falls off, it's okay. But yeah, I really uh, like how uh, these fowls like to grow. Let me uh, go back a little bit. So you can see, I mean, this is beautiful. For me, it's like art. It's absolutely stunning to look at. So yeah, anyhow, I already think this is going to take some time. So I try to speed it up a little bit. <laughs> this is a uh, no idea plant that it was mislabeled, I should say. But so I was a little bit disappointed when it opened up. And then I start to like it even more because the blooms are still beautiful. But yeah, I bought it um, as a Sogo. Sogo. I can't remember. I'm sorry. Shiny, shiny girl, something like that. It was a yellow and white one. Anyhow, I uh, st started to like it more and more. So it, uh, it can stay here. <laughs> and here we have the Silveriana in bloom. Second time, but never had such a fairly large spike. I know this one can make even way, way bigger spikes, but it's a very uh, fairly young plant with also the beautiful modeled leaves. And it's absolutely beautiful. Such beautiful uh, flowers. Next to it, it's color wise, probably my favorite. You can see hopefully how bright it is. It's it's really popping <laughs> color wise. It's beautiful and it has a name. It has a name. Here she is. This is the name for the yellow one. If you like it, you can uh, can find it. But um, hopefully you can find it, I should say. <laughs> but yeah, beautiful, stunning, very beautiful blooms. Absolutely beautiful. So and then next to it, we have this one, which is beautiful. I really love the color. It's fragrant. So it's a very nice fragrance, a bit sweet fragrance to it. It likes to bloom, so it already starts to continue on the spike. And I, I have a name for it, but originally it came uh, without a tag. So keep that in mind. And it was uh, around the same time that uh, Miss Archigal found this one as well, funny enough. But this is the name for it, I think. It's at least incredibly close but and for this one i will try to put it more closer to the roof i have a feeling that this one needs a little bit more light so that is something that i am uh, going to uh, check this year then here above it that one we have also a summer bloomer which made a basil cake luckily because it came from orchid garden and let's show yeah here you can see the dark part this was originally the plant it came with, but it came with uh, stem rods, or crown rods, I should say. So luckily I did uh, decide to make a cake because it's a very nice one. Also yellow and white, but it's it, the fragrance, you guys, is beautiful. And this, as you can see, it starts to make uh, spikes. We have two at least, yes. And this is one that I saw on Annabelle's channel, The Orchid Room. So yeah, that is this one. And I bought it because it was wonderful. And she described that it has that beautiful citrus, citrus type fragrance, which I indeed uh, do agree and do like. <laughs> so then we have a reddish one. And one of you uh, viewers did ask me for the names, especially on the more reddish one. I'm not sure if you uh, mentioned uh, or yeah, I mentioned uh, uh, me in this one. I'm sorry. It's beautiful. It ha the blooms are not that large, but and it has some fragrance. So it's nothing to write home about, but still, it has some fragrance, and it has a name. So that's uh, the funny thing of this, <laughs> of the nice thing, I should say. Here it goes. Then you will get this one with a beautiful, bright lip. I hope you can see it. It's very beautiful. So that one is all living over here. It's basically always in bloom. It keeps on blooming. Absolutely stunning. Almost whole year round, probably whole year round. 
I don't remember correctly, but I do remember that this one blooms for a heck of a lot of time. So if you like the blooms and the color, then this is probably one you uh, should add to your collection. This one is a recent uh, gift from uh, Inse, Celebensis. It's still starting to adapt. It has the roots, but it surely and surely starts to adapt. So I don't have it in full cell watering yet. I'm still waiting to get it into growing mode, but it's continued to grow this leaf. It was about this size when I did get it. So it's tripled in size, so that's a good, uh, good thing. The Cerulliana we just saw. And then we have a Sturtiana. I always struggle about this name, I, but I uh, apologize. But this one we just saw as well. Then a bit of a funny one. Maybe you recognize it. This is probably the smallest fell that I have with the biggest name. This is the Phenolepsis Gigantica. And it grows incredibly slow, but it grows, it grows. And it's starting a new leaf, as you can see, but I, uh, yeah, just keep an eye on it and I'm going to leave it there. I, I didn't know that I bought such a small variety of this one. Otherwise I wouldn't have bought this one because it takes so long to get it uh, to grow a little bit bigger, but it can become incredibly large. So that's the beauty of it. But yeah, that may take some years. Okay. Let's move over here with this one. I have, this one is a little bit more orange yellow one. A variety of the Bronze Maiden, also a very common uh, family abscess, I think, and that is because it's just beautiful and it has these beautiful leaves, that gray, gray, greenish color, uh, same as the Gigantica. Beautiful, I, I love this one, and we have some speckles on here, but leaf wise, I, I think I, this is my favorite, just that grayish color. I don't know why, but I love it. <laughs> and these are the blooms. And as you can see, this one, uh, there's some quite some variety uh, uh, on these blooms. If you compare them with other growers, some have the more pinky ones. Yesterday I saw on Facebook uh, a more yellow one. This is close to that yellow one, but has is is it's just a little bit more orange in there and and some pink. So yeah, they are uh, not all the same actually. And I think that, that that's uh, that's something uh, that's very nice. But yeah, I uh, apparently have a more orange yellow one. And then down that one up next to it, actually, in that pot, <laughs> is this one. This one is beautiful. I love the color. It has a name. So I'm going to grab the tag for you. Well, I'm going to show it because it's stuck. I can feel it's stuck and I don't want to break the roots. But it's the Sogo Relax. And believe it or not, I have it. Let me check it quickly. Whoops. So yeah, I did quick. Quickly check the back of the tag. Uh, I did repot it into um, self-watering, semi-hydroponic, a year ago. It's uh, it's from April 22, and I looked it up because it didn't skip flowering. I bought it in bloom with these two spikes. As you can see, we had several blooms. It was in bloom. I did a repot it into self-watering. It started growing and it just kept on blooming and blooming and it just didn't stop. So this one is a year around now. It's, it's very amazing. So this is a, a fairly young plant and there are not much leaves on there, but it's uh, very strong. And I now notice, <laughs> believe it or not, another spike coming. So yeah, it's uh, enjoying her life, I think. But yeah, that's another one. Apparently that is a uh, cane bloom all year round. Beautiful colors, absolutely beautiful. And let me quickly check. I believe this has a fragrance as well. Yeah, slight, slightly fragrance. Yeah, I'm checking uh, this one underneath it as well. This one has a fragrance as well, but it's not the same. So there's a bit of different. And talking about fragrance, we just saw her in her own video, Leodoro. Fragrance wise, the best one, if you ask me. Absolutely. And the blooms are stunning. Like I said in that video, it's in my top five or top three plants. I think it was a top five, but yeah, it's beautiful. This is for me a must have. If you can buy it, <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. So now I need uh, a little bit of help of uh, this thing over here and I'm not good with heights. So <laughs> bear with me. Here we go. Sorry, you guys. I 
didn't plan on making you dizzy. Otherwise, I cannot reach them. <laughs> uh, this is the Violacea in the Go Crush itself. Well, you can see it's not doing well. It never did, so I, I think it's just a poor plant. Because the other ones are doing so much better, so therefore I think it's not really the setup that I use, but just, just a plant that it keeps trying and I let it, but I think I might lose this in the end. Then next to it, it's a first time bloomer, and it's beautiful, and oh, I cannot take the tag out, <laughs> but I can show it to you guys, we can pause it if you want, because it's at least a L -E LD's Bear King crush. And it gives these yellow orangey type blooms, which I do like. <laughs> then I have something burned here. <laughs> Not sure what happened there, but anyhow. Luckily it's doing fine and it, make, it does make a cakey as well, but no blooms. And this one has the same tag as the one next to it. So something went wrong. And I think this is the right tag for this plant. So this is something else. But yeah, I first need to have it in bloom. So let me show you the tags if you are interested in it. But yeah, one of these two is not uh, the right one. This one, hopefully you can see it is making quite a few spikes. So in the near future, we can check the name and know for sure. So those are over here. Then we have this one while I'm up here. <laughs> Let's film her as well. And I think this is the Chiaida Francis Pico Tea. Not sure, but I did uh, found this name and it's very, very similar. Almost exactly the same flowers. This one is really likes to bloom. Also a bloom of a, a family opposite that likes to uh, bloom all year round. There in the back we have one that is doing not doing so well. Let me zoom in. Well, it's not doing bad, but it, I cannot get it to flower. I think that is the name. Again, it's uh, originally a no ID. I know. So I'm not sure about the name, but anyhow, it's living there. Then up, <laughs> here we go, you guys. This is the area where it's got becomes a little bit complicated, but here we are, another mini veil. I almost lost this. And I basically gave up on it, I just kept it in a pot, and lo and behold, it started to make a basil cakey, and that one is flowering currently. But it's just not a strong plant. But who knows, we can uh, keep it in flower. Then over here, I think this is a polaric one, as you can see. It's no ID. I just bought it in a hardware store a few years back. Polaric is not really my thing, even though I like this one, but yeah, I'm not, this is the only Polaric variety that I have. I'm not very into the Polaric. I just like, quotation mark, simple blooms like this. This is a more pink and orange one. And I think it's a commercial name, Family Ops Tulken. So if you look it up, you will uh, find this one. But beautiful, I like the uh, combination of the pink and the orange. Okay, now I need to see if I can go downwards a little bit. Yes. <laughs> and move the steps out of the way. I'm sorry, you guys. Like I said, it's, this is a bit challenging, this area. Well, first of all, we have this one staring us in the face. <laughs> And it's coming from this fell here, and she has another beautiful spike over here. This one is also very beautiful. Sorry for the shaking, I shouldn't lift it. Just leave it as it is and then film. That works better, but yeah, beautiful. Basically the same story, it's originally a no ID, but I did find a... Uh, a fell that's incredibly similar, and I think it is the same one. So I'm going to zoom in, uh, and there's a root in a way. <laughs> so yeah, it's the Maydar Yellow. Finally up says Maydar Yellow. So that should give you this one. 
beautiful. No fragrance, but beautiful. And oh well, and uh, later on in this video, I'm going to talk about my growing system and uh, the fells hanging strangely from the pots, etc., and and how I hook them to the wall. <laughs> I did forget to mention that in my intro, but I I'm skipping it now. And first, I'm focusing on the blooms. This is also a personal favorite. I just love it. It has this beautiful, almost pastel type of colors. The yellows, the orange, the pinks. Fairly large blooms. I like uh, large blooms. It's just a beauty. And it has this beautiful veining going on there in the blooms. And it lives up there. So yeah, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, just above uh, her is that uh, pink one we just saw, and then we have this one. This one is amazing color-wise. That contrast is so beautiful, absolutely stunning. And that's why I, uh, I'm not really into the pink colors that much, but this one is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And yes, this one has a name. This one has a name. Uh, Want to look up Madonna Tokyai? Tok 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 I don't want to talk, okay. <laughs> and you should, whoops, where is the tag going? You should get this one. Absolutely beautiful. Then we have another beauty over here. And again, same story. This is originally a no ID, but I did find something very similar to this one, and name wise. Golden Apple Ox. If you look that up, you're going to find something very similar to this one. Probably the same, not completely sure, but it's stunning. These more coral, coral types, uh, type colors I uh, do enjoy as well. Very beautiful. Then you guys, that's the Peloric one. This is the Anasman. Then we have this purple reddish one. This is a no ID, so I, I really have no clue of the name, but it's beautiful. And next to it is this white one. And this is a keiki from, I'm not, not really into the white, I do like the white fails, but you know how it goes. If people know you grow orchids, you probably <laughs> get uh, white fails as a gift, which is very sweet. But I don't want them because otherwise I will have 20 or more white fells. And I love them, but yeah, I only need one. And actually I have two at least, yeah. But that, uh, the other one is, has these large blooms, we will see in a minute. This one has fairly round blooms. So I do really appreciate the shape of it. Absolutely beautiful. And this is a keiki from uh, a plant of a friend. So I did get this white fail with the keiki. I kept the keiki and she did get the original mother plant. So therefore this one is uh, very special. Very, very uh, good friend of mine is growing the mother plant. So yeah, this one can definitely stay because it uh, reminds me of her, <laughs> which is nice, of course. Then uh, also a nameless orchid over here. Beautiful little uh, cluster of blooms. And let me check quickly. Oh, I cannot find the other one. This could be the fragrant one. Let me check. No, not really. There is a hint of a fragrance. This one is also fragrant. Maybe I picked that one up. No, that one I don't smell this. <laughs> Anyhow, there, there is a hint of fragrance on this one, but not much. The other one I have uh, as... Oh yeah, I see it already. That one is the fragrant one. That, does, that one does look very similar to this one. <laughs> I apologize. Um, then we have this beautiful reddish one with that white stripe going on on the petals. And a beautiful burgundy reddish purple color, which I like. So therefore I bought it. And look. It's hanging, it's growing out of her pot. It's hanging beside the pot. We will address that later on in this video, but it's crazy. <laughs> okay, let me move to this side and I have my cymbidiums here. So I need to find a little bit of space where I can reach my orchids. Let's start with this one. This one is a gift from my husband. He found it in a secondhand store. Well, in the secondhand store we uh, own in, uh, in the city nearby. And 
yeah, I'm not going to go much into detail, otherwise this video is, will uh, be way too long. But we have the second hand store to uh, gain money for uh, our uh, bird shelter. So that's why uh, we have that second hand store. And sometimes uh, some people bring in files that they don't grow anymore. And he thought this, uh, did find this one. It was uh, not looking so very happy. So he bought it, brought it to me as a gift. No idea what type of color uh, flowers it would have, but this is uh, this is it, and I have it for three years or so. So I already knew the the flowers and the colors on this one. Then over here, you guys, let me uh, first show it in detail, and then I'm going to zoom out a little bit because this is one of the biggest ones that I have, flower spike wise. <laughs> Beautiful, very very. Um, how do you, uh, f f kind of famous already orchid, I believe. You see this one a lot, or at least I see it on uh, with other growers. So yes, it does have a name. Uh, let me try to uh, reach it. Well, first of all, I'm going to give you a little bit of a ID. There we have some blooms with there and there, and that plant is over there. <laughs> Here she is behind this one. Uh, yeah, there is the tag. It's something hot kiss. I remember. Yes, Chi Chi Ching hot kiss. Then you will find this one. Uh, and then yeah, let's pick this one. This one is also very nice. A bit of the similar situation as the uh, Madonna we just saw, but then this one has a yellow lip instead of a white one. And yeah, this one I just uh, wanted for years, and I believe it's the Phenoliopsis yellow ox. Yeah, I just could, but I can barely show you the tag. But the yellow ox, look for yellow ox, and you should find this one. Beautiful. And next to it, we have well, actually, I'm trying to show yes, this one. It's, this bloom is just going over it, it's still uh, attached. Attached to the spike. Let me. There we go. And this one is just opening up. So it's opening up a little bit brighter. This is the Karen Alba. Alba, yeah. Is it Alba? I will look it up and I will put the name in the screen. But this has a name as well. And she lives all the way up there. So I barely, hardly can reach it. And can I check the name from here? Karen. Yeah, it's Alba, Karen Alba. And I always think of Alba, bla uh, black and white, uh, yellow and white, but this is Karen Alba. And then look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. And she has quite some spikes going on. This is the actual mother plant. No, not the model, but this is the actual plant with the spikes. And he has two spikes here and two here. I believe that we have two new spikes for this year and two older from last year that started to branch out. But she has also blooms all the way over here. <laughs> and this is called Family Ops's Jaguar, but I think that's a commercial name. Phenoliopsis Jaguar. So let's move over to this one. Also a very nice fell. This is the same story as the pink one that I did get from my husband because he uh, did uh, take two fells home and this is the other one. At that uh, day, they, they were uh, coming in together in the store I've brought in, I should say. And it didn't look so well, so we have some older roots, but it did uh, make quite some new roots. Some aerial roots did go back in the reservoir, as you can see. <laughs> so yeah, it's very nice, I think. Then we have this one. This one didn't bloom for quite a while because I was messing up the system. I didn't understand what I was doing back in the days, but I think it has beautiful blooms. It even has a few there because it has some keikis as well. And this has a name. This is Phenoliopsis Dragon's Gold. It has actually a beautiful name, if you ask me. <laughs> Hope you can see the tag. 
So if you want to look this one up, and I have some uh, damaging going on, but I did spray it, and I think it's okay now. It's probably thrips, so I did spray it for thrips, and I keep an eye on it. But here you can see more uh, better blooms, more fresher ones, I think. Uh, this one has also a little bit of damaging going on. But anyhow, beautiful, nice cluster of blooms on this one. Dragon's Golds. Then down here, probably a commercial name, but this is Phenoliopsis Maya. And she is hanging here. That is the Maya. And she has a beautiful spike all over here as well. Beautiful blooms. I really like the pattern on it and the colors. Absolutely beautiful. So let's go over to this one. Well, it's in frame already. It's an old spike from last year. But she did make uh, uh, two new spikes. Well, actually, the model plan did make one, and this is from a cakey. But it looks so beautiful. It's almost like it's one spike, which isn't. But nonetheless, it looks beautiful. This is a no ID, and it does look similar to the KS Sweet Diamond Morocco, but I'm not completely sure it is. Probably it's not the same plant, but the blooms do look very similar. So that's why I keep the name, but I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know it's not the original one. I'm not sure, because there's no, another one that looks very similar as well. So just to, that you know. And then we have this little one. This was probably the first one that started to bloom. Uh, the f uh, the, f the f uh, first fell that started to bloom this year. Whoops, words are a little bit hard, I believe. <laughs> Very nice spike, and we have another spike over here. No name for it. No name for it, but it's beautiful. Then up here, sadly has no name, but that was the one I mentioned or referred to earlier. This is a little bit more yellow than the others we saw, the uh, white with burgundy color. And I believe this one is a little bit more fragrant. Then underneath that, you guys, do you remember her? If you're long on my channel, you probably will. This is the Phenoliopsis that I did make a separate video on last year because it had 13 spikes in bloom at the same time. Absolutely amazing. And I'm going to make another video on it because I'm not going to count them. But um, yeah, I think it's nice to see if we have still have 13 spikes on it or maybe we have more. What do you guys think? <laughs> Coming up soon. A special video on this one, but it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And it's a mini fell, but look at how she's growing. It's absolutely very strong and beautiful. I heck of a lot of roots. She just decided to start some cakes this year as well. So yeah, this one is growing wonderfully well. Wonderfully well. And this is a cross. It has not the official name. And I cannot reach it, so if I don't forget, I will put it in the screen. But I, I, I have the name for it. I definitely have. It's a palance, crush with a palance, something. So yeah, a video coming on her soon. I'm curious to see how many spikes. I did try to count, count them, but <laughs> anyhow, let's go over here. This is a beautiful orange one with three spikes. And this is the Venoliopsis Surf Song. So if you like this one, I luckily have a name for you guys, but look at it. Beautiful blooms, beautiful blooms. Absolutely beautiful. And then down here we have this one. Two beautiful spikes on here. Those little clusters, very nice bright colors. And I sadly have no name for it. I know it's fragrant. It has a bit of modeling going on on the leaves. It's absolutely beautiful, but yeah, sadly I have no name for it. If any of you guys recognize some fells that I'm showing you, guys, uh, you now, please let me know, of course. This one has a name. This one has a name. This is a fairly old one, so I almost killed it <laughs> because I needed to understand how to grow them in this uh, 
set up. Uh, let me check for the name. Stefan Liaps is uh, Lineta and some numbers. <laughs> So yeah, beautiful, nice, um, and not the most favorite, I must admit. I like the colors, but I like the more brighter colors. I like the oranges a little bit better, those yellow ones, but still, it's beautiful. It has been through a lot, and it's finally coming back, and it's trying so hard to make me smile. So yeah, she, uh, she's a keeper, and I have her for years, so I don't want to sell her or anything. I'll give her away. But yeah, to be honest, I'm more into these types of blooms. <laughs> this is a nice peachy one with a fairly strong, heavy spike. It was facing this way, something like this, but then it uh, opened the blooms and it's now hanging. I hope it doesn't uh, snap, who knows, but you can see there's quite some tension on it. I'm going to leave it because otherwise I uh, need to stake, uh, stake them and I don't want to stake them. It should be fine nonetheless, but who knows. And this one is uh, also growing out of the pot. <laughs> no name for it, no name, sadly. But beautiful blooms nonetheless. Then up here, in comparison, you can see this one. This is a more regular sized bloom. And then you have that pink one, look at that. It's a giant. It's absolutely a giant. I did find it uh, at IKEA two or three years ago, something like that. It's just, this is not a pink I really uh, enjoy that much, like I uh, mentioned earlier on, but I like the size of it. And the pink is okay, but it's not that really my. I like that a bit more stronger pink, so to speak. But the blooms, the giant. And I was a little bit afraid that it was maybe because of hormones that they put in and then you buy it and it reblooms and the blooms aren't, aren't even almost half of the, of the original size. But this one kept growing these tremongous large blooms. Absolutely beautiful. So this is the pink giant. <laughs> we did the, do the peach one. Then we have this one. Uh, also fairly large blooms, not as big as the pink one, but fairly a size to it. And it has an old, this is an old spike, a branch, an old spike from last year. So we have some blooms here and then it's working on this spike over here. Just starting to open up, but look at it. It does remind me of the magic art, but it isn't. It isn't the same, but it does remind me of the family opposite magic art. No name for this one, sadly. But so yeah, it has a, looks funny, a spike over here <laughs> and one all the way over there, but beautiful. Maybe you did recognize this one, but this is the Las Vegas, probably a commercial name as well. But if you Google it, you will find it. Very uh, almost waxy type bloom. It's not, it doesn't look waxy, but you can feel it's, they, these blooms are very strong, thick, a bit thicker than this. This one is very thin and this one is thicker. So the, it has something to do with the parents, I believe. But beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Young plant, it's over here, it's not that big yet, but it's doing fine, it's doing fine. And then over here we have another white fell, we, uh, I mentioned earlier on. This one has the fairly large blooms as well. And it's growing from an uh, old spike, which is here, but it then goes up here. And this is the mother plant actually, and she has another spike way over here. <laughs> so yeah, funny how these guys are growing, or the girls, just depends on how you look at them. <laughs> but look at these blooms, again, my hand next to it, I hope you can see it. So yeah, this one is very, very, uh, makes very large blooms and beautiful cascade spikes, at least this one uh, did, and I probably did break off a point of the spike, I just see it now. Sadly, sadly, sadly. But this is the Grandi Floor, probably a commercial name as well. Friendly Ops is Grandi Floor. Now I need to go underneath this spike, so a little bit of, isn't it called limbo dancing? <laughs> Something like that. And now I have to turn around. Here we go. <laughs> oh yeah, probably. Yeah, it's always a little bit risky these days, but anyhow. 
So we were talking about this one, the white fail. Oh, this one, we have another white one, but this is a big lip and it's just facing the other way. So, but anyhow, I'm going to see if I can, you can see it, yes. I have a lot of glare going on in my screen, so I couldn't see it, but this is a beautiful big lip. I, I love the shape of it. It looks like the Vandaliopsis Bigfoot, I'm not sure, but it's very similar. So I don't have a, a name for it, but it's beautiful. I do like the Big Lips fails. Pelorik, not so much, but Big Lips, yes. Talking about, whoops, Big Lips. <laughs> this one has quite a, a nice cluster of blooms, actually two spikes with branches. This is one of the oldest ones that I have. So this was uh, the first Big Lip that I, uh, <laughs> that I bought. I have no name for it, sadly, but it's so beautiful. I mean, look at it, absolutely stunning. And you can see that this one has been through a lot as well. Learning curves, but it's coming back and it has a lot of root now. I, I believe that I did manage uh, get her to lose her root system for two times. <laughs> so sad, poor thing. Oh. I needed to learn so much. Yeah, I, I felt so bad for my orchids because I almost killed them. And I did kill some, not that much, but I did kill some while I was learning the system. But now we, uh, we are uh, back again and she's really coming back to life. And it hasn't been blooming this strongly for years. So beautiful root system. I hope the leaves will do get even bigger this year this growing season as well. But she is uh, kind of rescued. Same story almost for this one up here. This one has a name, so I'm going to show it to you guys soon. Let me see if I can uh, zoom in a little bit here. It's the Leopard Prince, Phenoliopsis a Leopard Prince. If you look it up, you should get something like this. Beautiful, beautiful. Same story, it's a very old, oh no, that's very old <laughs> in my growing area. One of the older ones, but you can see it looks young because it kept on losing leaves, roots, and uh, yeah, because I couldn't get it to grow in a semi hydroponic setup. But she is, luckily she did survive. And then over here, we have this just regular, more pink purplish one we found in the supermarket. Very often, I believe. This came from the secondhand store as well. This is actually the first one that we did get when we opened the store. And I thought, yeah, that is one I want to have. Same story, I didn't have a clue of what type of blooms I could expect. Uh, no, that all the leaves did uh, already die off. When I bought it, it had a lot of. Um, marks on the leaves so it wasn't looking as good but look at it now roots everywhere <laughs> roots everywhere so yeah just a simple purple one but nonetheless beautiful don't get me wrong don't get me wrong then we have this one this is more of a pink and an orange I should try to describe it if I have to. <laughs> Color wise, a lot of pinks and a bit of purple maybe, but also some orange orange in there. It's just if it is it mixed up with a pink, strangely enough, if that, if that does make sense. <laughs> but beautiful, beautiful uh, speckles and stripes on there. Again, no name for it, I apologize, but it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. That is her part. You can see now with this one where the actual orchid is. Well, we have some stem here, but <laughs> yeah, there's the part. That's what they do. But I'm going to uh, talk about it that almost. First, I'm going to show you this one. This one does make a heck of a lot of blooms. For me, it does look very similar to the Gortis, but it, it's just a bit different because it, the leaves are different shape of it. So I'm not, I don't think it's this, the same one, Gortis, but the blooms do look very, fairly similar. And you can see a very long 
stem. This one really likes to grow and to bloom. And then we have this beauty. Yes, I love, love, love the yellows. <laughs> and this one had, let me see, yeah, four spikes. Four spikes in bloom. And it has a name, yes. This is the Venoliopsis Sogo, Meili Zogo. There it is. Zogo, Meili Zogo. Beautiful. Let me quickly check if it has a fragrance. No, I, I don't. I, uh, I, if I remember correctly, there should be a little bit of a fragrance, but I'm not sure. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. But who needs a fragrance if you are so beautiful? <laughs> And from a distance, it looks so beautiful. All oh, those very bright yellow colors. I love it. Talking about from a distance, look at this, you guys. It's amazing. And to be honest, that was the last one. So we had a close look up at 65 of these beauties. But look at these colors. I uh, always describe it as a sea of flowers. But yeah, that's what's happening this time around of year uh, with my uh, fell wall I'm talking about a wall i promised you guys i would talk a little bit um, about the system as you can see here the wood this is the outside uh, wall of the house and not that long ago i had to take them off because i we get did get the isolation in there <laughs> but anyhow uh, i will link this video if you're interested and these grids uh, we attach on the wood so we have a little bit of space because I thought, well, the wall may get fairly cold in winter. So let's give it some room so we have some air movement in between it. That's the logic behind it. And plus, of course, you need a little bit of room so we can, let me see, attach the hooks. I hope you can see the hooks. Need a little bit of room to grab, of course. So if I really would have it flat to the wall, I wouldn't have the room. And it turned out that the aerial roots, as you can see, did like it as well. And some did, did uh, get attached, as you can see here. But I had to break them off because of that isolation uh, story. <laughs> but otherwise, I just leave them and I let them grow. But yeah, we needed some room, so I did break some uh, roots off. But this is basically it. Those grids I just uh, do get from the hardware store. And this is used for uh, most of the times for your outside plants, so they have something to hold on to and can grow. But anyhow, I don't have the expensive uh, stuff. And I, uh, it's very easy to make it fit. And then you attach it to the wall. And you can basically hang every plant you want there. And I thought when I started this greenhouse, let's do my fails. Because fails originally in nature as more orchids do, but as fells like to hang and grow a little bit downwards. They, if I'm correct, they grow a little bit towards the light in the beginning, and then they, the leaves do get heavier as those spikes, and then they start to arch over. And that's very ideally because if it rains, the water will fall out. And I like that idea, and I also like the more pendulant, the more hanging uh, flower spikes. I really, really like the look of it. And so, so it, that's how this idea of a fell wall uh, started. Actually, I just thought well, I'm going to uh, do it and I will, I will see how it, how it goes. If it works or not, I have no idea. Just, just do it. And then, of course, I need to, to figure out how to, how to hang them. And I thought, well, the easiest way is just a grid and hooks. So I just did bought the hooks and I can probably take this off the wall so I can show it to you guys. And I just burned two holes in it and put the hooks through. Did make them fit and I did attach them. So you're basically making one hook out of two. Because you guys, for some it makes sense straight away. Probably why you need two. To be honest, for me, it didn't. And it makes me smile every, every time I mention this. Because if you have one hook, <laughs> and it happened, yes, a few times, your arc can move like this. It can go all the way like this. So yeah, I had it happen where a pot was hanging like there and my arc was on the floor. So yeah, and now it can 
cannot do that because it, those hooks keep it into place, if that does make sense. I attach them and that is because not to let it flip over to the side, but otherwise if I don't attach it like this, the, the hooks will fall over. So if I try to put it back, the hooks are uh, just hanging so I cannot reach it. And now they stay in, in place, so I can just lift it with one hand and put it back. So that's why I use a different uh, two hooks with a uh, cable tie or a, a piece of uh, wire, something like that. And basically make one hook out of two again, so it doesn't flip over. <laughs> oh, it does make sense if you mention it, if I now mention it and talk about it. But back in the days, I thought just one hook and hook it on the wall. But yeah, that's not how it works. I also have these baskets here and there, which hold a flower pot, which are also very handy, but they are fairly expensive. I'm sorry, very expensive. So just like this one. And I did this one, was, did, I did uh, get this one as a gift. So I put those two in there together. But these, uh, those are uh, more ex expensive. So I bought the hooks and I now only use the hooks. I'm not going to buy the baskets anymore. So I also have a video about how I take care of my fails. So I will link it as well. So you have an uh, uh, idea on how, what type of fertilizer and how I do that, etc. So you guys, this might be <laughs> quite a long video, but I really was looking forward to this one. So you now have a general idea what switch single uh, files there on here because I uh, show, of course, most of the times the wall. If I do the blooming updates, I don't show, show them one by one, but you can see for this video, it takes so much time, but they are so beautiful. They really deserve this video, don't you think? <laughs> I do, I do. Anyhow, you guys, thank you so much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't already, you might want to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And of course, for now, thank you for watching and I really, really, really hope to see you at one of my next videos. <laughs> Bye.